All right, Jim, our next question sent to cornydrivethru at gmail.com from Aviv in Tel Aviv, Israel. Oh, I come on. Is it, now, is that like Keepsy from Pukeepsy? No, this is a real name, and that's a real city, and let's go to Aviv's question. I started watching wrestling since WrestleMania 9 and the King of the Ring that followed. I was nine years old then. Uh, it's a little bit of an English issue, but I'm trying to get through it. I remember Jim Cornette as the person I hate the most. Yay! During the storyline of Yokozuna and Lex Luger. Back then, the kids believed that wrestling was 100% real, so I thought you were a scumbag. <laughs> the adults didn't want to ruin our enjoyment of... Uh, well, it's banging somewhere upstairs. It says Marhab shows. I'm not sure what that is. A bit like not telling children about Santa Claus. In 1996, the WWF broadcast on Israeli cable stopped, and it broke my heart. Aww. I was the last in the class to see wrestling, but for me, it was everything. Anyway, enough about me. It's time for my question. Yes. Regarding Hook. <laughs> One... We went all the way from Yokozuna to Hook in 45 seconds. One, what advice would you give him today if he were to ask you what to do with his career? And two, if you were in a place where you could influence the booking personally and would like to favor Hook, how would you build it? Again, a little bit of a translation issue, but you get the gist of it. Yeah. Um, it, first of all, with Hook, he got over when they first exposed him, introduced him, when, he, when we first saw him, in, in a way that, and I'm remember we're fans of his, and I think he's got a lot of ability in a different style, so I'm not downgrading him, but when he first started, I think the fans, I can't remember exactly how it was that he came out, but he was the kid, he had the, the hair, and he didn't speak, but he did the fucking jujitsu throws and was impressive. However, he came out, they first started the fans deciding that they were going to cheer for him. It was one of those things that the fans do when they decide they're going to uh, boo Dominic so that he can't speak. And then people see that on TV. And then the next crowd at a TV taping, will they pick it up? Right. We've seen that with a variety of things, especially in AEW where, the booking doesn't lead people to go where they want the booking to lead them to go. It just lets them make up their own shit. And we've talked about Tony didn't follow up on it because he just hooked disappeared and it became a thing that came and went. But at the same time, it would have been hard for them to follow up hook when he started at that level because he was greener than a pepper tree, right? That was, He's obviously trained with his dad and he's worked obviously in wrestling school, but it wasn't like he was going to be ready for them to push him to the level that he was getting cheered at. They didn't know what, it was like Wardlow. They didn't know what to do, but Wardlow, as we've seen, probably wasn't ready, especially verbally. He could have been led in the ring physically, but he wasn't ready to be focused on as a, the world champion that go out and have 20 minute matches with guys. Am I making that plain enough, Brian? I think so. Yeah. Okay. But what they could have done with hook instead of him just walking out and eating potato chips or him walking out and goddamn. Hey, remember Tony for a while after the taping, when Tony does his thing where he goes out and thanks everybody, he would just say, and here's hook. And they'd have hook just walk out. It's just stupid. They didn't know what to do, and he was green. But what they should have done was just keep him alive in that respect and let him get a little experience a little at a time and work in any independence he wanted to get booked on in the Northeast, around where, you know, around home, or get ring time at whatever training facility he's training at and just give him a match. Once a month on Dynamite. Once every couple weeks on Rampage, maybe. Not on the YouTube with all the other jobbers and etc. And have him go three or four minutes against a guy with some level of legitimacy to him as far as look and maybe a little bit more experience, but not top guys. They don't have to 
beat their top stars for him, but just somebody that could legitimately work with this kid for three or four minutes, let him do his different style stuff and his jujitsu throws and get some wins. And then one would think that from month one to month six, when you've seen him six times on Dynamite, by the and they do all kinds of other hoo-ha on that show, so certainly they've got five minutes. And you would probably be able to see the improvement from match one to match six just in the terms of he's been working steadily and the people have seen him and they know what he's doing and that way they would understand his finishes and they'd understand this one throw that he always does out of a certain thing and they would pop more on it. And instead of just screaming for him because he was there with a funny hairdo and doing nothing, which is what they were doing, and then they quit really doing that because he wasn't doing anything else, you would have some progression in how he's coming along. But that would require forethought. Uh, he's not from California. I don't know if New Jersey has diplomatic relations with Cucamonga, so we don't know whether anybody there's pulling for him. He seems to be, because he's already in better shape and more serious about his business than Maddie and Nikki are in, in their late 30s, he's so not, they probably don't like him. He's not from New Jersey. He's from Long Island. Uh, Jersey, Long Island, wherever the town. Although they say he's from St. Mark's Place, which is pretty funny because St. Mark's Place lost all of its edge a long time ago. Well, maybe if Edge decides to come back to St. Mark's Place, then... I did. I don't know where Edge and Beth live. I, last I heard, they lived in Asheville. Anyway, back to Hook. So that's the thing. Is just he just floated around. He's done nothing, and now he's in. The, Tony gets a kick out of him being in a random tag team with somebody else because he never speaks to him, and they just look at each other and or fist bump or whatever, and that's supposed to be a big moment. And we should have heard from him by now. And if he can't talk live, put it on tape. Edit packages. How did he, um, being Taz's son, how did he adapt this style? How instrumental was Taz? Have we ever seen footage of them working out in their ring at home or in some training location in St. Mark's Place? Have we seen <laughs> Taz showing... <laughs> hook the fucking Taz mission or the Tazplex or whatever. They have a ring set up at the former Coney Island High. No, I have no idea. We've never seen anything like that. We've just heard Taz talk about him. And now that Taz is a commentator, not even a heel commentator, just a commentator, he never really says too much beyond what the other guy said. There's no and insight. They, a couple times they shot an angle with Hook and he said, well, I didn't know that was coming. And Hook has the FTW title belt, which is, again, it's, it might have been something at one point, even though it was a made-up belt to begin with. Taz made it something at ECW because Paul's booking allowed it to be done. Whereas this, they just gave the kid the belt, and then he defends it every once in a while, but it's not a legitimate belt. It's supposed to be the fuck the world. I'm the real champion. It, this doesn't fit at all. And... Nothing's done with it. And since everybody else in the company has a belt from some other company, that doesn't even stand out. And then again, the kid that never speaks, it might get over for a while, but after two years, probably needs to say something or tell us why he doesn't speak to people. What is his motivation? Did, was he a skateboarder and he fell off the skateboard and banged his head and now he can't speak? It's all gibberish? I don't know. Make up some shit. R send out rumors. Get people talking. Rumors? Rumors. What kind of rumors? Like the one I just made up. <laughs> but at the point is... <laughs> the, there's nothing. That, it's just nothing. And, and so the kid deserves better than that, but you don't know anything about him or what the fuck, how he got this way, or you know he's Taz's son, you never see him even together. 
They don't speak to each other. It's just ridiculous. It's just another... It, Tony doesn't bring that action figure out of the drawer that often. So when he does, he just puts it in with a few of the other random ones. Once again, the question was about advice you'd give Hook. Well, okay. Hook, get the fuck out of there. Do everything you can to get accepted into the WWE developmental system if you want a career in professional wrestling. If you... You know, if you're getting paid a lot of money here, I guess, you know, you're a young kid, so draw it as long as it's around and then attempt to get in the WWE program. I'm sure his dad would help him. Depending on how relations are there, I have no idea. They, he called it a sloppy shop. I think there may still be some problems there. may be there. some bad relations. <laughs> okay. Well, it, it, I mean, go work independence, but not just jack off death match bullshit and people who work you know run their hometown on their birthday i'm sure again his dad's name carries some weight with some legitimate independent promoters that run some decent shows there's got to be some out there stay away from the garbage wrestling matches and the garbage wrestling promotions and get as many reps as you can and figure out you know more of what works for you and i would also tell him if he ain't any good at promos, start getting better. Because sooner or later, if anybody uses him for real, he's going to have to talk. And since we have no idea what he sounds like, that's a open question. Otherwise, in the ring, he looks very athletic, and he has the different style, and the shit can get over, but he, there needs to be a well-thought-out reason and background for why he does these things, why he acts this way, how he does these things, and how he learned them, and uh, his goals for what he wants to do in the business. And until somebody's going to book him like that, he just needs to try to figure out everything for himself and get as much experience as possible, working with people that are more experienced than he is, and not listening to most of the people that work in his company. Or being able to tell the ones that you should listen to from the ones you shouldn't. Stay away from anybody that lives in California. Or Ohio. Or Tampa. Tampa. Where does Danielson live? California. Okay, we're good. Yeah, well, I, I covered it. Where's Preston Vance from? <laughs> I don't know, because they said he was in the Monster Factory, but then he went with QT down to his other school down there, so I don't know if he's from up here. I'd hate to say so after what I've seen from him in the ring so far. I'd, I don't know. Well, if, I'd encourage anybody who's serious about a career in professional wrestling, stay away from Preston Vance. He may hurt you accidentally <laughs> just being confused. <laughs> Next time this guy wrestles on Dynamite, I don't know if he's on this week or not. Next time he wrestles, pay attention. We got to actually watch him work. If he ends up being good, there's going to be a lot of egg on our face. I don't, he, he may be a new flop dollar. He may be the, the curiosity, the can't look away kind of thing. But anyway, that's that's my advice to Hook. 